In the last video, we looked at messages and how they are actually a representation of both headers, which you can imagine as kind of this old world sending and recipient information that is essentially header information. And we looked at how it is also data in a document. And these are the two fundamental components of any message. So the question now is, well, what does this look like in terms of WebSphere MQ? W what do we see? And the answer is that we had we had actually seen in the past that there are three components of a of an MQ message. The first one is the header, and the second one is something called properties, which are potentially optional depending on what you're doing. And the third thing is data. So the question is, well, how do these map onto what we've already looked at? And some of these are going to be pretty obvious, right? The header is, is clearly going to be up here in the header. And, and so we can just put a number one right here. And then secondly, in fact, let's do it like this. And then the properties, these are also optional, but they are actually going to be located mostly in the data. So these remember the properties sort of describe what's going on. The headers describe the contents of you know this whole this whole thing here. That's what the header is trying to describe. But the properties are actually more related to the data. Um, it describes sort of metadata for the data that's going on. And so properties are actually mapped in here under data. And then third, you have the actual data. So that's uh, clearly going to be listed here under data. So you're going to have, you know, two and three listed here. And then, you know, one is, is essentially that whole, that whole envelope. So this is the sort of mapping that's going on between uh, the major parts of MQ messages. But there's another thing that we have sort of discussed, uh, but we didn't do in much detail. And that is that in the header, you have something called the MQMD, which stands for the message queue message descriptor and that describes the content like you would expect that a, that a header would normally provide and there's another component to this called the r f h information and the r stands for rules the f is for formatting and h stands for the header so it's the rules and formatting header information and to, to draw this a little bit more cleanly it's actually going to be you know, it's going to be here, R, F, H. Now, there are two versions of this. There's an R, F, H version 1, and then there's separately an R, F, H version 2, which handles Unicode much better than 1 did. And essentially, you know, this is this is this number 2 that we've been talking about, and that, of course, will go in the data part of the message. So what does this look like on the IBM website? and specifically in a sort of more professional looking diagram. Well, you can see here that you have, uh, we had talked about earlier, JMS, so Java Messaging System. Uh, you have this application, so you'd create some sort of application or you're already working with a given application. JMS does not read directly the MQ message format. And you can see, in fact, JMS looks at it at a, at a more high level sort of approach, which is that you have the header, you have the properties and the data, those three components that we just looked at, where again, the properties and the data are um, sort of the data for sure is in the body, the header is obviously the header, uh, information, the envelope, and then the properties can be sort of, depending on what is involved, part of either MQMD, which is again, the header, or you can see how it maps, which is what this diagram is all about, it could map also to the RFH. Well, we just looked at RFH. Remember the rules and formatting header, right? And this comes from the MQ8 reference book, by the way, which looks like this. So if you're interested in more information about what we're looking at here, you can find it in this book. And it is uh, about 5,000 pages, so it's lots of good information if you want to know the contents of the headers and, and you know, the MQ. Uh, RFH structure, which versions uh, there are. There are two versions we talked about. Here are the structure of the first version. Here's the, s the second uh, version that in allows Unicode strings to be transported without translation and carry numeric data types, these improvements we talked about. And essentially, you can see these mappings. And these mappings matter, and we'll talk about them more later in the IIB uh, video. 
but essentially this is an important um, high level view of uh, you know of what we're, we're looking at here now that what we want to do now is look at actually see these things in play and we can do that through a utility called RFHUtil and this is a free download so you can find it online you'll need the MQ client so if you don't have the MQ client, you'll have to download that. And in fact, you won't have the MQ client by default in CFM2. So you'll need to download that. But you'll see a message down here when you, when you try to run this program if you don't already have the client. So this utility is very, very useful for diagnosing problems and for figuring out and troubleshooting you know, various issues. The interface is a little strange when you first look at it. So you have this kind of connection string at the top. You can tell we're looking at the server connection Q here, right? you can see the name of it, you can see we're using TCP, you have these slashes separating the parts, and then you have your host name followed by a port in parentheses. And then I'm giving this uh, given Q name, and, and essentially the way this works is you first provide this information, then you go down here to load names. Uh, there are many, many buttons, but in fact you have to go to load names because what it's going to do, as it says here, is it will load or refresh the queue name information into the drop down. This is the drop down it's talking about and if this doesn't work you're going to get an error message but you should get the list of queues when you do this. And then you can do all kinds of interesting things once you're in here. For example you can display all the messages that are on the queue and there they are the same five that we had looked at before and if you start a browse which we're going to do in a second you'll get additional information and I'll show you what I mean by that. So what, what would you want to do with something like this? Well, you can open a file, and you could give it, say, a test XML file. And you could then read, and you, first of all, you can see how many bytes were involved. And you can get error messages and codes down here if you have any status codes, essentially, is what these are. And you can say, well, let me see the data. So you click on data, and you can see the content. And if you, want, if you know it's XML, which we do, you can click on XML to parse it properly, and then display it correctly the way you would, would expect. And then you can also see how large the data is, 122 bytes, and it tells you the source name. And then remember we talked about the MQMD. Well, here's all the data that you might see. And the question is, well, how come these things aren't filled in? Well, that's because if you want to see that data, you go to the main tab, and then you can click on Start Browse. And that will, as it says here, it will start a browse operation on a queue reading the first message. So we're in this queue. There are five messages. And now if we go back to MQMD and even the data um, uh, tab, you can see, hmm, it doesn't seem to be XML. Strange, right? But you could click up here and, and go through these messages and sure enough test two and if you if you format it as um, as as a character in this case in any case you, you get the idea you can see additional information here's that the MQMD this is the header we've been talking about it's the envelope itself look at all this information about what's going on and then you can also see the RFH that we've been discussing uh, from before so this is not a theoretical concept it really is uh, practical and you can see or analyze what's happening in detail using RFHUtelC is the name of the program.